So, yes, so, uh, so Vincent asked me um, if I would come and talk about uh, what's coming next. Um, and I said, no, I'm not coming to your conference because it always runs late. He said, no, this year the timekeeping is going to be completely different and be completely on time. You'll be finished by 4.20 at the bet, so I've booked a 9 o'clock flight, so everything is <laughs> under control. So <clears throat> there's a couple of chances. First of all, I, need to, I just need to quickly check the um, technical. I, just wanna, I don't want to make it too technical, so I just want to check the technical level of the audience. So can you put your hand up if you think that Corda is a blockchain? This is my... If you think Corda is a blockchain, can you put your hand up? Okay. Okay, all right. If you think uh, Hyperledger is a blockchain, would you put your hand up if you think Hyperledger is a blockchain? Yeah. Okay, and if you think... <coughs> Hyperledger Fabric. Put your hand up if you think Hyperledger Fabric is a blockchain. That's good. Okay, excellent. Um, <coughs> so it's not a technical audience, then, is the point you're making, is there? <laughs> okay, so I can say. So basically, the problem I had doing this was <coughs> most of the blockchain ideas that I. I mean, I do, I do travel around and, and talk to different people. I'm involved with a few different companies. Most of the blockchain ideas I hear are stupid, and it's quite difficult to pretend that they're not, even when you're trying to get funding. You, you can't help smiling at some of these things. I was at Money 2020 earlier in the week, I'm sure some of you... Did, did most of you go to Money 2020? You're, you're too young for that sort of thing, are you, or what? Is the <laughs> um, <coughs> so uh, there was a great quote on the main stage, Money 2020, um, and a very important VC from Asia said, well, 99% of the blockchain proposals that we get are for entertainment purposes only, <laughs> which is how I sort of feel about it. So most of the blockchain ideas are stupid. Most of the ideas that are quite good have got nothing to do with the blockchain, and a blockchain's been sort of tacked onto the end in order to get funding. And so we all understand the kind of reality of these sort of things. And a typical example... I'm just explaining to you why I don't want to spend too much time talking about blockchain before we talk about AI. I was at a thing the other I won't say the name of the company because it's not important, but I happened to be on the client side of the table when some management consultants came in to pitch. And this was to do with revolutionizing, it's always revolutionizing something. I mean, it's never just making something work properly. Like, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work properly in my bank. I mean, I wish they'd kind of focus on that first before they started revolutionizing things with the blockchain, but like sending SMS messages which are trivially counterfeitable when phishing is completely out of control. Like doing something about that instead of block... But anyway, that's just my bank. ABM, I'm sure, is very different about this. So you're going to revolutionize insurance. How are you going to revolutionize insurance? Well, when, when customers, will register, so I, uh, customers will register their valuables you know, on the blockchain. It's an immutable record, so we'll know that they really do have this watch or whatever. And then if their house burns down, the insurance company can just go to the blockchain and we can pay out automatically using smart contracts or something. I can't remember exactly. <coughs> you know, if you get burgled, they'll know exactly what was stolen and they can pay you out properly and whatever. So if you put a list of my valuables on the blockchain, I can absolutely guarantee my house is going to get burgled. Why would you do that? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But somehow it's become a religious thing, the blockchain. It's like it's not a proper item. Like, if I, ca if I stood up here talking absolute crap about artificial intelligence, just to pick a random example, I'm not saying it couldn't happen. But if I stood up here talking random crap about artificial intelligence, somebody would call me out. This isn't an English audience. They're not polite. Somebody would come up and say, you've got to stop. Right? I can say anything about the blockchain in any... And people are, oh, wow, you know... The blockchain, yeah, because my plan for ending world hunger involves the blockchain. Really? That's great, because, you know, I said, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about world poverty. I think I'm coming down against world poverty, so we're going to use the blockchain for that. I was like, oh, great, that's fantastic. So I don't want to be one of these people who stands up here and tells you we're going to fix whatever using the blockchain, especially when I'm not even talking about a blockchain. I'm talking about a distributed ledger with Byzantine fault tolerant transaction ordering, and not even a consensus mechanism, I won't get drawn into that sort of discussion. It would be childish and petulant to keep going on about that sort of... But honestly, you might as well stand and say, well, we're going to solve this problem of supply chain measure. We're going to use little pixies. We'll put little pixies inside all of the containers and they'll sort it out. I might as well tell you that. And then when you tell me, well, it's not really pixies, well, it's not really a blockchain. So what difference does it make? We can say, if well, the rule is we can just say anything, well, then I can say anything too. So, anyway, anyway, blockchain. I just want to 
This, I just, okay, so technical of the audience, none whatsoever. Good, okay. It's my sort of audience. But I want to rise to Vincent's challenge because I want to make a presentation whereby at least one person in this audience has the idea for a new business because of this presentation and goes out and does something about it. Because you need the DNA for that. I don't have the DNA for that, right? I, I have advisor DNA, okay? So I, I go to, in money 2020, I go to the bar with Heiss and I'm like, you know, the way my bank does it, it's absolute rubbish and whatever. And then we stay in the bar drinking and complain. I would never do something about it. You have to have an entrepreneur. No, you need entrepreneur. See, so when there's real entrepreneurs, I really admire them because they don't just stand in the bar. It's stupid rubbish the way my bank. They go and do something about it. I don't do anything about it. I just talk about it. I've got advisor DNA. But I know there's somebody in this room that has entrepreneur DNA. So I'm going to make a presentation, and I will challenge you at the end, if you don't believe me, somebody in this room is going to go out and start a business because of this presentation. And if I don't achieve that, then I haven't reached the bar that Vincent has set for me. So first of all, uh, we're all very excited about AI, the blockchain, aren't we? I mean, I know it's five o'clock, but come on, let's... <laughs> Give me, that's right, give me something to work with. We're all excited about AI in the blockchain. Now, actually, this, isn't, this slide isn't impressive because on Tuesday, I really did go to a presentation at Money 2020, which was about quantum AI and the blockchain and the Internet of Things. <laughs> I really did. I didn't make that up. I wish I was making that up. I didn't. That's a real presentation. The only thing that was missing was the cloud. I put my hand up. I said, can we, the quantum blockchain Internet of Things, can we put it in the cloud? I thought that would just, <laughs> that would tick every box. If that didn't get funding at Shell, I don't know what would. It's uh, really, it ticks every box. So I'm sorry I've only got AI and blockchain on this one because I wanted to have the quantum blockchain and IoT. But anyway, the point is, it's like amazing, man. I've been to a few presentations about it, so I know. You, you could, that, that wasn't the idea. Come back. There's no, there's no point talking to the patent lawyer now. That wasn't the idea for the business. You, just give me a couple of minutes and I'll... God, that's a tough crowd in Amsterdam. Okay. So I thought I'd go and have a look around, because it's wow like amazing. So I thought I'd go and look around to find out it's like why it's wow like amazing. Maybe, possibly I'm too old, I just missed it. So, so I, found, I found a graphic here. You know, one of the other things that bothers me at the moment is they're allowed to call things infographics when they have no information content whatsoever. I mean, that should be, you know, I mean, couldn't the regulators deal with things like this instead of messing around with FATF stuff? I mean, couldn't they stay focused on things? Like, infographics have no information? I mean, come on. You've got to sort of have standards for these kind of things. But anyway, so what kind of things would the blockchain do with AI? Well, it will solve the trust issue, which is fantastic, because... I'm not sure, but somebody in the audience probably knows how it would solve the trust. I mean, it solves all the other trust issues, so probably this one. And by the way, AIs are notoriously mistrusted of each other. So, you know, possibly this is the, you know, the step that we need to really unleash it. It will help build a distributed supercomputer, which we don't have at the moment. Oh, wait, yes, we do. And they work perfectly well, so it can't quite be that. It will connect different marketplaces. Now, if that isn't the most revolutionary IT idea that you've, it's going to, connect you're sitting there like I'm to nothing it's going to connect different marketplaces aren't you reading this it's going to it's going to i don't know i'm just showing you the infographic i know it doesn't mean anything but this, i'm trying to build up a narrative here so anyway look so the blockchain's role in ai technology is fantastic for no obvious reason that anybody in this room can determine but whatever but on the other hand wow the blockchain's amazing because you've been hearing today, the blockchain is going to transform cloud storage. It's, it's going to transform gun safety. It's going it's to it's transform the music industry. I mean, it, there's n literally nothing the blockchain can't do. Like everything we can think of, it's going to be completely transformed by the blockchain in some non-specific way that we can't quite <laughs> put our finger on at the moment. But I mean, it, will, it will come. I mean, had people not invented Spotify and, you know, perhaps the blockchain would have done something there, but I don't quite get it. And it's, I don't really see how it's going to change cyber. But anyway, we'll see, but the point is, it's going to transform 
automotive tracking vehicles because you just cannot do that without the blockchain. Except you sort of can, can't you? Because people already do it now. So, but we can probably do it better with the blockchain is the point that we need to make here. So that's going to change everything too. And it's going to change the voting system as well. Who thinks it's a good idea that your vote should be recorded on a blockchain? <laughs> of course, it's a stupid idea. And anybody, it's, it's, it's a ridiculous idea. Because then I come at Vince and I put a gun against your head and say, I'm going to shoot you unless you vote for my candidate. Then, you, then I can go to the blockchain and check whether you voted for my candidate and whether I have to shoot you or not. Putting your vote, why would you put your votes on a blockchain? This is madness. You know what we do now? We have a paper and we basically have a red It was good enough for my father and his father before him, Vincent. It's change for change's <laughs> sake. What's, what's, what's wrong with the piece of paper? It doesn't matter who you elect anyway, because Facebook's in charge. So. Right, so uh, that's amazing. Okay, so the blockchain's amazing, AI's amazing, so let's put them together to make something even more amazing. So I found this infographic here, which if we put blockchain and the AI together, it's going to improve citizenship in developing countries. I didn't know how, but now I do. By spying on you everywhere you go, and if you put your feet on the seat on the train, you get banned from traveling on the train next time. Sensible policies for a better Netherlands, Vince, and I can see why we were looking at that. But my favorite one is it's going to do super efficient Bitcoin mining. Is there anybody in this room, I realize you don't have all of the technical skills I was anticipating, but is there anybody in this room who knows what mining is? Bitcoin mining, somebody, okay. What's the key cryptographic, al cryptographic algorithm in Bitcoin mining? <coughs> it's hashing, it's hashing, okay. So can somebody tell me, I will give a prize, I promise, if somebody in this room can tell me how artificial intelligence can break SHA-256, I will give them a prize myself. We already know how to, right? We already know what you have to do. You have to do trial and error to get the right hash. We all, no artificial intelligence is going to tell you a better way of doing it. It's maths that does that, right? So out of all the stupid things I've told you, I save the stupidest for last. But there's a reason I'm... Sh See, now you're thinking there's no business ideas here, aren't you? And you're probably right. But if you just stick with it, I'll find something for Shell to fund. Okay, so meanwhile, back in the real world, <coughs> what's actually going on in the real world? Well, in the real world of the blockchain, we have smart contracts, which I think everybody in the room would understand are not smart and they're not contracts, and it baffles me why this usage of the word continues. Vitalik Buterin, who is, how would you describe him? One word for Vitalik Buterin. He's, the He's a genius. The guy is a genius. And he says, he says now, he says, I wish I'd never called them smart contracts. He says, I wish I'd called them persistent scripts. <laughs> He's not a marketing genius. He's a genius, <laughs> but he's not a marketing genius. <coughs> Okay, so smart contracts, they're not smart, they're not contracts, let's go over it. They're not smart, they're not contracts, but what are they? They are fucked. Because look, <laughs> every time somebody tries to do something, pro every time someone tries to do like a real serious money business with smart contracts, this is what happens, right? You end up messing up the entire... Now, why is that? What is the dynamic behind that? Why don't they work? Why do we end up with the DA... This is the UR attack. This is the first one. But, but it's, by f it's not the only one. I went and just picked up a couple of random things just to illustrate to you with what's going on. So this is... Uh, I got this from a token site. Why did they pull the token? We audited the smart contract to ensure that everything was fine. The report could be found here. I won't say which consultancy did the report. It's not relevant to the conversation. Unfortunately, we experienced an error when closing the smart contract. There was a translate, mistake translating the wallet address, blah, blah, blah. So why is that is such a big problem? Well, because normally when your programmers are downstairs mucking around, bodging up some stuff for your website, they call it agile nowadays, by the way. It's like, it's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the new way of doing computer things. So instead of working out how things are supposed to work, and then working out the best way to design them, and then now you just muck about in JavaScript and keep going until the marketing people throw up their hands and say, all right, that's good enough. That will do. You can show that to customers. That's called Agile. Now, when you do that on a website, it doesn't really matter. Because when you bodge up all of the JavaScript on the website, and the website goes down, and you get a phone call at 4 o'clock in the morning to come and fix it, you just bodge up the JavaScript some more until the thing stays up. 
and then you can go back to bed. But with a smart contract, smart contract, I've got to learn to say that without laughing. With a smart contract, you can't do that. It's out, it's out there, it's on the blockchain. What's, th what's the one word we know about the blockchain? It's immutable. So once you've put your rubbish code out, sorry, there's no coming back. You can bodge it up on the website and get away with it, but when you bodge it up on the smart contract, everyone's screwed. So you'd say, oh, well, but surely, because of the excellent universities we have, the training schemes, the 10,000 IT people buried away somewhere in ABN AMRO who are hammering away right now, honing and polishing their COBOL so that it's absolutely perfect in every respect, this sort of thing wouldn't happen very often. Well, wrong because it happens all the time. Absolutely all the time. Just go to GitHub or just go and look and you see stuff like this all the time. Okay, I tried to do it, blah, 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 and you go down and you discover they've been sending money to address zero. Ethereum address zero is full of cash <laughs> because of programmers <laughs> cocking it up all the time. You can't get the money back because no one's got the private key for address zero. It's, it's, this is all the time this stuff is going on. <clears throat> this is the report from the UK Financial Stability Board this month. This, actually, this is the Financial Times report on it. But this is what it said. The shift towards smart contracts, self-executing code. Include the question of whether, to what extent, software developers can be held responsible if contracts do not function as intended. In other words, the Financial Stability Board is saying, are smart contract programmers fiduciaries? Do they have a fiduciary duty? Now, believe me, I am... First in the line when it comes to locking up programmers for mis... I mean, I honestly, really, get them off the streets is my general <laughs> message where they can do the least harm possible. But even so, when the FSB starts saying people that bodge up smart contracts are going to start getting held responsible, there are people in this room I know right now who are a little bit nervous about some of the projects they're working on. Okay? When you bodge up the website, it doesn't matter. But when you bodge up the smart contracts, it looks like it does matter. <clears throat> now you might say, Sh it's easy to write smart contracts, it's just a bit of JavaScript or whatever. Who's going to mess up a smart contract? These people are absolutely excellent, top class programmers. This is the real, this comes from how to build your first hyperledger ad tutorial. This is, do you know what this program does? It, hello world. This is the hello world program. In, it's 150 lines of code. I, I doubt, I mean, I haven't checked it, but I doubt this code's correct. I bet there's an error in it somewhere, because there always is. 150 lines do hello world, and you wonder why the programmers who are bodging this up get stuff wrong all the time. You remember in basic when we, you wouldn't remember, it was before you were born, but when I was at university, it was 10, print, hello world, 20, end. They were simpler times. I know why you're envious. So what's the problem? The problem is that people are really bad at writing code. And I mean really bad. The first time I, you know, the first project I ever worked on at a big bank was to do with ATM interoperability switching. And before I worked for a bank, I thought banks were these like giant, ruthless, capitalist enterprises, these machines for, and you spend a week inside the bank, and when you get money out of an ATM, you're like, oh my God, how did that happen? That's fantastic. Because <laughs> everything was, I remember, like on my second week, we're, we're trying to work out why so it's not, we look, why is this PC connecting these two, they were Stratus 88s in those days, why have we got a PC connecting these two Stratus? No one knows. No one knows. You take the PC out, the ATM network goes down. What's the PC doing? Nobody knows. I haven't got a clue. You know. <laughs> and it's because you know, they were swapping bytes, or one thing was 7-bit and one... And it was easier to put a PC in to try and fix... But, you know, even really, really good skilled programmers are not very good at writing code. And generally speaking, if you're not doing a moon landing, it doesn't matter. If you're just doing something for a bank, whatever. Okay? But with smart contracts, it's different. Programmers that, cannot, programmers that cannot be allowed to have bugs can't be bodged by an average JavaScript programmer used to work in an agile manner. They can't. 
This, was from, this is the guy who's the lead author of ERC721, which because I'm obsessed with tokenization is one of the most important standards to me. ERC721 is the non-fungible token standard. And he said last month, projects in general on blockchain have lots of bugs. People copy and paste the code. They don't even read the code. They copy the wrong code all the time. Every one of them is happy. Because we grew up in, and I did too when I was a programmer. You grew up this way, we'll can fix it later. But you can't. If you're putting it on the blockchain, remember immutable. Does that mean something in Dutch? Because like in English, that's the important word, immutable. That means garbage, never like garbage in, garbage out. This is garbage in, garbage that's now immutable. <laughs> which is the worst kind of garbage, by the way. <clears throat> so, the good news is, there's lots of really terrible jobs. By the way, we were talking about this at, at uh, European Women in Payments Network on Wednesday because we were talking about gender balances and so on. And I was just pointing out, there are lots of horrible jobs that men had to do, like coal mining, right, for example. But it, and it doesn't matter that coal mining wasn't equal. It doesn't matter that there weren't so many women coal because nobody goes coal mining anymore. So it, we don't try and fix the gender balance in coal mining because it doesn't, no one does it. It's f so... All of this stuff about getting girls to code, trying to fix the gender balance in... I'm not sure. Because programming... I mean, I hope none of them are watching at the moment, but the, the problem with programmers is they think it's artistic. You know, they think it's, it's just clerical drudgery. And if they'd just gotten and did what they were told, instead of messing around with artistic stuff, we'd all be a lot better off, right? So the truth is... In 2040, this guy's saying, in 20 years' time, will people write code at all? And the answer is almost certainly no, because who would want to do that? It's drudgery, right? There's other, there's other more interesting jobs to do. The good news is that the AIs can already write better code than people can now. Never mind 2040. 2040 is when you get rid of the last actual genius 100x human programmer. To get rid of the average programmer, we don't need to wait until 2040. Google's AI can create better machine learning code than the research. So they made a machine learning thing, and the thing they told it to do was to learn how to write code, and it wrote better code. And you can see exactly why that is, because for this machine learning algorithm, all you've got to do is point it at GitHub, and it can suck up millions of lines of code, which an ordinary human programmer could never do this. So teaching the machine learning algorithm to write better code than the people that wrote the machine turns out to be very easy. Not 2040, this, this is now. In fact, this is from 2017. Two years ago it could write better code. I was talking to somebody in another context, somebody with PSD2 and... and so it doesn't matter for this audience, but for, the, for, for people who know about it, you'll remember PSD2, it's, um, it's that, uh, that thing we used to do, the um, European Union. It's the European Union thing <laughs> about... <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't resist the joke. It's your last year here. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's the European Union regulation for opening up banking. So if you're not familiar with it, it's quite simple. It means that under the PSD2 XS2A, the API for the TPP, AISP or PISP, <laughs> to do the 2FA, SCA access to the ASPSP, it, am I wrong? Hi, Snows, I'm telling the truth. He's laughing because it's true. He's hanging his head in shame, actually because he's embarrassed because he knows what those things mean. Anyway, look, it doesn't matter what we do with those APIs, but the point is, the point is, <clears throat> there's already a program that can write better APIs. So we're all panicking about these shit APIs that we've put in place, and oh, they don't work properly, and each bank's implemented it in a slightly different way, and we've got all these overlaid layers. Why are we getting people to do this when we can already get programs that can write in, 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 so, so my general point is programmers are going to go away. Specifically, we can already get rid of the average programmers now. And when you talk about specific areas, 
So when you narrow it down, so no, you know, this is not writing a program to, to play a game like World of Warcraft or something. That's not what kids play now, is it? Fortnite. This is just to write some stupid APIs for a bit of bank software. That turns out to be quite easy. So when you narrow the domain down to make it more specific, you can do that right now. So, what is the overall strategy that we should be adopting here for blockchain and AI? The answer is, we get the robots to write the smart contracts. So, <coughs> see, this is an artist. This is me. It's a funny joke in English, because, see, this is an artist and this is a piss artist. In English, that's a funny joke. It doesn't work here. This is an artist called Austin Holdsworth. And that's the machine that he built for the front cover of my book. I wanted a real machine for the front cover of my book. And that's a machine that burns money, puts it through a little Stirling engine, and generates electricity to charge a mobile phone. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, and it's a fantastic front cover for my book. I would never have thought of that in a million years. Not in a million years would I have come up with that idea. That's what we want people to do. Stuff like that, right? Stuff like writing smart contracts, which is human drudgery that should be condemned to the dustbin of history, we get robots to do it. Now, when I say robots, you will get a bit scared because you think giant killer robots stomping around the countryside executing everybody. <laughs> Could happen if you let humans write the software, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but, but when I say robot, I, I just mean an AI that's empowered to do things. And as we said, we said that we were talking about it earlier on. We're not scared about robots because they'll all be... Pro Remember the three laws of robotics? Who remembers the three laws of robotics? Oh, my God. I've made a colossal demographic error here. Has anybody here ever heard of Isaac Asimov? No, wait. Has anybody here ever heard of Will Smith? He was in the movie. Do you remember the movie? Okay, you remember the movie. Okay, now we're talking. So you remember the robots? They were all programmed. They, they had the three laws of robotics were programmed into them. So yes, number one, you're not allowed to kill somebody. Number two was you're not allowed to press that button that says I'm not a robot on a website. Num I'm not absolutely sure about that, actually. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. That might not have been one of them. But, but, but look, you get the general idea. We, we give the robots rules so we don't have to worry about giant killer robots stamping around yet. So, I'm just an advisor, but there's somebody in this audience that's got entrepreneur DNA. So if you want to do something on the blockchain with AI, you want to do something that's going to work, you want to do something that's going to be cool, you want to do something that's going to make a difference, <coughs> getting a robot to write the smart contracts in a domain-specific area is the big thing next year. And somebody is going to make this work. And when they do, smart contracts will suddenly change and become a serious business to implement the token businesses that we were talking about last year. So if you want to start a new business, this will be the place to go. Thank you very much for listening. Dave. Dave, wait one second. We have a couple of questions here for you. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's see. AI could invent a quantum computer optimized. Nah. Okay, okay. well, no, first no, of all, no, 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 no. I, I, no, this is, I can, this is, no, let me answer that because it was a stupid question. Okay, good. So, okay. can I ask that? So, um, Bitcoin mining depends on finding hashes, and hash algorithms are not affected by, there are no quantum computing algorithms to accelerate hashing. The, the quantum computers attack asymmetric cryptography. So, for symmetric, so if you're doing hashing, don't worry about it. If you're doing symmetric cryptography, you need to double the key lengths. If you're doing asymmetric cryptography, fucked. Now, the good news about that is one third of all the Bitcoins that have ever been mined mm -hmm. are lost. I lost, yeah. Right, because people have lost the keys, the dog ate the USB stick, they changed it from one phone to another and forgot the password. That's what happened to me. One third of all the Bitcoins that have ever been mined are lost. The Satoshi wallet alone has... A million. 10 billion, a million Bitcoin? How is million Bitcoin. Billions of dollars in it, just that one wallet. Yeah. So the way I think of Bitcoin wallets is like Spanish treasure galleons that have sunk <laughs> on the way back from the Caribbean before the English could raid them. They sank in storms and things. So all we've got to do is build a submarine to go down 
I mean, it's quantum computer. Quantum it's a big, yeah, like, clever yeah, analogy. Yeah, yeah. So we build, a, we build a submarine, quantum computer, and then we go down, and then we break the private keys, on the, on the, and then we recover all of the money from them. So by my calculation, we but could spend... But then the whole the Bitcoin network will be invalid anyway. Well, it will anyway, because someone's yeah. going to invent a quantum okay. computer. Can we go further? Okay. I'm not trying to depress oh, you. Okay. I just uh, I told you, somebody in this room is going to be rich beyond the dreams of avarice because they listen to me about building a robot that will write smart contracts. That's not depressing at all. And what's more, if you went and bought a Euro Millions lottery ticket today, where the prize is 130 million euros tonight, <laughs> you've got less chance of winning the Euro Millions lottery than becoming rich through my plan. So really, you should take this very... I'm not depressing you. I was giving you gold dust on a plate, and you're just sitting there. So you should be running out right now. Like Thank Get you. the best AI yeah, researchers. It's very clear. Let's take the third one. Um, how do you feel about our current financial system? <laughs> because we know what you think. We know what That's you think. That's not a technology We know quite. what you think of blockchain, but what do you think of the current, uh, your current bank, your system? Yeah, how, how do you feel about that? That's not a technology question. I can't answer a question. What I'll say at the moment is, is the current financial... So the thing that really, really bothers me is inequality. That's what drives problems in society, right? And the, the Gini coefficient and all this kind of thing. He's, he's, he knows economics, so the Gini coefficient is the word we use between us. Uh -huh. So the thing that really drives me crazy is inequality. And Bitcoin is approximately 100 times more unequal than the current financial system. So if you're asking me where do we stand, pff, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. You're very happy about the current system. So was I this a nice ending? Was this a nice ending of the conference to have some normal depressing words before we go out and conquer the world with the blockchain and AI? Give Dave a big hand. Thank you very much, Dave. <laughs>